Okay, so welcome to the forum of the real cowgirls. We're kind of like, you know, form of the day. We're not all dressed up in our attire, but um, we're just going to talk a couple conversations. Let's, let's talk about the past rodeo. Like, all the stuff that went down, like it was the first rodeo. It supposed to be peaceful, nice day. Everybody supposed to have been coming out. But then we had fights. I didn't and go to drama. Mesquite, so I don't know what happened in Mesquite. No, not Mesquite. I'm talking the one that's in Mo Muggy. Oh, Muggy. That okay. was like the original first oh, one for okay. Oklahoma. Oh, yes. Okay. So that's the original one for us. So it was wow. Mm-hmm. A lot was going on oh, yeah. in and out of the stands. Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Gosh, like, so this is how we show up, Black people, for our first rodeo. We show up to fight and everything. Like, you guys are like in the city with each other and. You wait to get to a road there where there's family members. That's where most of the time half of these hoodlums see each other. I mean, they're driving down the same street with each other. Like, you're in the same city, but you wait to go to a whole different town to address somebody. And then ruin it. Well, then they ruin it for everybody. Not only just with the men, it's with females too. Females too. Like, wow. So, as women, this is what we do. We fight each other. We we wait to see each other. Like, when is it going to be classy? Like, when are we going to be able just to show up, have fun, clean, quiet rodeo, and show people that African Americans is not ignorant? Right. Because we got that label on us. Yeah, we do have white people go to the rodeos. Yes. White people competing, thinking, yes. well, that's what, yeah. Like, they competing and they, like, go straight to their trailer, like, okay, we're supposed to get out of here before it gets dark. Right. Because we got to go because... Something's gonna, gonna, <laughs> gonna pop off. Something's gonna pop off. Mail us our money if we want. Yeah, right. That type deal, you know. So, yeah, it, it, it's stuff going on in the arena, outside the arena, dramas, um, a lot of hearsay, see say stuff, and people just want. It's like I just feel like they should just adjust it outside of the rodeo. People bring their little kids. People, people's grandmothers are out there. People's little babies are out there. People's little kids are out there. I mean, people's moms is out there. So if you think something happened to one of them and all they was doing was just trying to go and support somebody, mm-hmm. and then this happened. Now mm-hmm. they got to look. Now they got to look for a funeral. At the same time, it's even the people that competing in the rodeos. Uh yeah, I'm not holding it just to the crowd. Yeah, okay. I'm not holding it to just the people that's coming there to spectate and look. I'm saying people also there too that has beef prior because I mean you go to Facebook. And you've seen the beef prior to the rodeo. You've seen the comments. Everybody's public, so everybody can read the comments that know who was going to get into with somebody and who they had beef with. Mm-hmm. Right. So it's just, but they all here, they all around in the same right. neighborhood. Right. Who catch this, this guy or this female at the corner store? Right. You know what I'm saying? You literally like live a couple blocks or the next little neighborhood over, but you wait to get so many miles down the street to address it in the final. But at the rodeo, mine is just, at the rodeo, it's a group of them. When they in the streets, not a group of them, just one person or two people together. At the rodeo, it's a group of them, and so they catch the person who they want to get at. With a group? Yeah, with a group. So basically jump Because everybody's person. at the rodeo. Ah, uh, so they want to be seen as well. Yeah. To show, oh, I whooped her butt, or I, I whooped his butt. Doing it for the people. Really? Do it because your homeboy's around. Do it because your homeboy said go do it. Yeah. Or trying to prove to your homeboys or homegirls that you ain't no punk. Yeah. That's ridiculous. Mm-hmm. Girl, I go the other direction. That's crazy. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's why when I go to the rodeo, I be in the arena, I be on the fence, and I don't move. I just, I'm high up on the fence where I can just see how to see everybody <laughs> doing what they doing. <laughs> like, for real, like, well, there's a fight over there, and then there's a fight over there. Because I'm not running to see it. I don't, I really don't care to, um, how you say, encourage ignorance mm-hmm. like that. You know what I'm saying? Gawking and videotaping it, world starring it right. type situation. You know, so, I mean, I take you there and I, God forbid it if I take you to a rodeo and something happens. You know, that we go on a rodeo <laughs> and then shit, Sunday morning, I got to wake up and try to start, you know, planning a funeral. Mm-hmm. That That's crazy. Or wake up and you got to get me out of jail because I can fault somebody. You know what I'm saying? Come out with bond money Monday morning. Right. It don't make no sense. It just don't make no sense. Like, but see, at the right, at the white rodeo, you know, people don't smoke. People don't really drink. 
how mm-hmm. people do at black rodeos because black rodeos have fun. It's, it's like a cookout. Yeah. It's a cookout. It's yeah. a family reunion. But, but we're going to kill one of our family members, though, at the end of the day. Yeah. But it's a family reunion. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty much. Because you can go to the white rodeo and, you know, they get their stuff pushing through. Yeah. They call your name, get it pushing through. And if you don't answer when your name is called, they give you like five, ten seconds, and they move on to the next test, and you disqualified. Mm-hmm. No money returned. Right. Even outside of the arena, no problem. You got them, they sit down, yeah. they watch their family compete. And after that, just keep watching the rodeo. And they, go home. Go. they collect their money and they go home. Mm-hmm. Peacefully. Yep. All together. You see, what the black people problem is, the after parties. Man, he was already lit party. after the rodeo, yes, so and everybody they bring that already... litness to the party. Yeah, and they was already feud from the from the rodeo, wanting to fight. So whatever animosity or who you couldn't get to at the rodeo, I'm gonna get that. I'm gonna get them at the uh, after party. Yeah, I just it's just it just behooves me, <laughs> <laughs> behooves me that us as African American Black people we cannot have anything like. We can't have a rodeo. We can't have a club. We can't have a cookout. We can't have a parade. We even can't like, have anything even, without some popping out. Even the ro- even outside the rodeo scene, yeah, there's stuff like this that goes on. Yeah, I mean but, they're closing down clubs because we in there cutting, and slicing, and fighting people and shooting the clubs up. Now we we shooting up rodeos like, but then it was crazy about it is that I thought about this. It's like they sit back and be like. Man, there ain't nothing to do, man. They didn't count the rodeos, right. man. They didn't close the clubs, man. Right. We can't have a parade, man. We can't have a cookout. Well, man, it's because of you and the way you act that the police has shut everything down. Like in Bridgetown. Yes, Bridgetown. Yeah. And it's, and it's crazy because these young little boys who like my age see these grown ups do it and then turn around and do it themselves. So, like Bricktown. Kid who was my age, who my teacher said graduated, went to Bricktown, mm-hmm. stabbed somebody. And that's why they said now 17 year olds and under cannot can't be downtown. Can't be downtown no uh, ruin everything. Ruin fire everything too much fire for people every go. one. It is ridiculous. Yeah, it's, it's crazy. Yeah, too people much. People want to ride at the house. <laughs> right. I go to work, I feed my horses, and I come to hell home. Mm-hmm. I go out to eat, that's about it. If you mess up my dinner, I'm going to be mad then. I'm fighting. That's why I don't go to parties. That's Kids my age, I can't because kids my age is too with it. They, they, they like I, I, I catch the look when I see him. So they just so careless with their lives. There's no reason why me as a mother I should be burying my 15 year old or my 16 year old or even at a rodeo, my five year old or something because of senseless killing or senseless confrontation. Right. Like it doesn't make any sense. Yeah. I, I feel bad for the mothers out there that that's having to go through that. That you know that had to bury their kids. I never, I've never felt it. I've had people that has had to do it. And I really can't even go up to them and say, I know how you feel because I don't. I've, mm-hmm. you know, thank the Lord above. I've been blessed that my son has been able to be in a 20, see their twins and keep flourishing and have kids and see their kids grow up, mm-hmm. you know? And it's just, a, I, I don't know how I would feel if I would lose one of mine. I mean, cause the boys had they fine. They, they've been fine back in the days, but growing up, they matured and was just like work, money, yeah, future, yeah. And half of these, like I said, half of these kids, some parents, you know, some parents don't really care about their kids' life, especially if they yeah. kids is really out there in the streets and they're yeah. like, "Well, I give up on them." Yeah, because I've always said it starts at home. Mm-hmm. It starts at home. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But on another topic, it's another rodeo this weekend. Unfortunately, I'm not going. My daughter's not going. We were going to go and compete. She was going to go run it in the borough racing, open borough racing, but after all this stuff going, I just really don't feel comfortable taking her to a rodeo now because for one, we got horses and I think about my stock and you know, something happening to them with all the commotion going on and just me not being, my daughter, if my daughter walks off from me and walks around with, with your friends, like then I'm like panicking because like, where is my daughter? Mm-hmm. Make sure my daughter ain't in the midst of it, or my daughter in the middle of a of a bullet or something. Yeah, hold that for a sec. East Side Rodeo when they had that shooting, and I was walking around with you no, know, no, it wasn't. Was the East Side? No, it was that, was that was Choctaw. That was Choctaw. That was Choctaw, and okay. I couldn't find you. We was calling you, girl. Once they started shooting, the friends I was with, they ran. I was just standing around like, well, 
<laughs> I, okay, Only listen. my daughter. I'm not. I'm not running because at the end of the day, you gonna run into the bullet. You hear me? <laughs> Messing around, I run. I get shot. I'm gonna stand in one place, and if they aim at me, they intentionally wanted to get me. That so. you was the person. You exactly. was the. Per- you was the one they was wanting. Exactly. So yeah, I stand in one spot, wait for the shoot to go down. And then after y'all call me, I'm say, yeah, duck and hide. Let me be still. Okay, the bullets is over there. Let me stay right here. Exactly. Let me not run towards it. Exactly. You don't know where they shoot at. Yeah, yeah you I get that. Exactly. Get that. It's dark outside. So right. and half these little hood lives is dark. So they <laughs> girl. And they hide. <laughs> but the thing about it is that they hide behind stuff and shoot at people and everything. Like if you gonna do something, own up to it, be a man, shoot a man in it, shoot a man while you're looking at them, not behind their back. Don't endlessly shoot somebody else. We're not encouraging gun violence. No, we're not. Y'all. Not no. at all. Not at all. Please put the Keep guns down. Keep the guns down. at home. Put them down. I mean, go back to fist fighting. Like, fist fight. But I think what it is is that these young cats, the pride, the if pride, their ego done. is in the way. So if they get their at whooped, then they got to hear it on social media. They got to yeah. hear it on the platforms of everybody or saying. You got people for them. Your home. Yes. <laughs> yes. Your homeboy saying, oh, bro, you got your and whooped, okay? And you don't want that image. Like, I didn't got but my then, tail whooped, yeah, and but now then I got to walk around. That occurs them, oh, well, okay, I'm going to go get the gun on them. You're right. Like, why do you want to take somebody in life because you got a whoop? I mean, back in the day when I was growing up, it was no guns. We fist fight. We like we squared up like, hey, man, catch me at the park. Hey, man, catch me after school. Hey, yeah. man, catch me on the corner. Hey, let's meet here. Mm-hmm. Now it's like you beef on social media. And then you want to go and you want to drive by and shoot up the grandma's house. You want right. to shoot up the mama house. You want to shoot up the sister house. They got kids you want to shoot house. up the job. If you can get to the job to know where he's working, you're going to shoot up the, the man's job. Mm-hmm. Like, why? Because it's the stupidity of it is that you out to kill this person and in his life because he made you look like a fool or, or tarnish your ego or um, press your pride. But then you don't realize now your life is over because you got to go sit down for murder for life. You have no freedom. You can't, you, it's like you said, it's not like you're going to kill somebody and be able to walk out of here scot free and still walk the earth and be like, hey man, I, you know, I killed homeboy. Right. No, dog, you finna go to jail. So now your life is over. It's not over until you're in a grave, but it's over because now you're in a two by two cell mm-hmm. for the rest of your life. Mm-hmm. And God forbid you have kids. If right. you have a kid, now your kid got to grow up without you. I don't think they really think. Like, you don't, people don't take the time to think about the consequences of their actions and who is actually going to suffer from it. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, even though you killed this man, this man's family suffering, this man's kid is suffering, but you're going to jail. So now your mama's suffering, your kid is suffering, your grandma's suffering because now they don't have you anymore. It's, it's death on two sides, period, if right. you think about it. It's literally death of two sides. Just one is on a shirt and you in jail behind us behind, behind bars. Right. Yeah. So I pray that this weekend is rodeos and mouse, Steve Ruger, the rodeo. I pray that everything is okay. I pray nothing happens up there. I pray everybody go have a good time and be able to go home safely. Fortunately, I'm going to make sure me and mine is safe. <laughs> We're not going to go. <laughs> So report back to us. This is our first um, episode of Real Cowgirls podcast. We'll be coming more and more often about topic, it, top, it, topics, <laughs> I can't talk, topics on rodeo and topics on horse care, equine care, topics on just random sometimes topic things, um, teenage, adults, all of that. So tune in, support, let us know what you think, um, leave a comment of something you want us to talk about touch bases on we have touch bases on it and come up with things um we plan on doing interviews outside of here um out there with cowboys cowgirls real cowboys real <laughs> cowgirls <laughs> let me put that because i mean it's gotta fit it's gotta fit the whole yeah you know we're our whole label to, we're gonna real. talk to people who's actually in the rodeo scene to see yes. how they feel about the rodeo and yes. how they feel about competing and all that yeah if they feel safe yep. you know and all that so tune in Next time. Bye-bye.